Hello me, from 10 years ago. I recently received a Facebook reminder that you just met David Attenborough almost exactly 10 years ago during your first couple of weeks as an undergrad at Oxford. To answer your immediate question, yes, he is still alive, but no, you haven't met him again since. Though you have met a bunch of other interesting people that you never thought you'd ever meet. Tom Hanks was really nice. The next 10 years are full of surprises for you, but also problems. And so I thought I'd send you this message to try and prepare you for those problems and hopefully save you some time in learning a couple of important lessons. Now I know what you're thinking, but the butterfly effect. By telling me this information now, you're eliminating the possibility of the future in which you're describing. You're rendering this whole exercise pointless. There are no such thing as spoilers. Well, yes, but I hate to break it to you, but you're not me. You're an audience on YouTube. And this isn't a personal message, it's a video designed to be watched by tens of thousands of people. Possibly the strangest thing that will happen to you in the next 10 years is that you will very soon, actually, in the next couple of weeks, make a YouTube channel and upload a video talking about applying to Oxford as a state school student. And that video does quite well, so you make some more and you like making videos. Eventually you even vlog your final year at Oxford and then go on to make more and more videos. And eventually you accumulate over 10 million views. You have an international audience of hundreds of thousands of people. Unfortunately, you do get stuck with a very dumb name that you literally just pick on the spot in the Oxford Computing Department. Like, pick a better name? Like your name? <laughs> this video is one that you will design in about 10 years time, partly to celebrate 10 years of being on YouTube, but also to deliver some important news, and also to make some meta points on the nature of reflection and YouTube, in an attempt to live up to the perceived personality and associated ethics that your online persona has accumulated over the years, like rings on a tree. You end up thinking about YouTube a lot, by the way. So in the next 10 years, you become a YouTuber, much like the YouTubers that you're watching right now. Some of them have moved on to other things, but some of them are actually still around. Some of them are your peers, your friends even. And you could be considered to have become the person that you wanted to be. You are a successful YouTuber. You make videos that people watch all over the world. You're even recognized in the street sometimes. You have famous friends. You know, you're successful. Not rich though. That, um, that hasn't happened yet. You're also a doctor, by the way. <laughs> you do your PhD in a field that you don't even know exists yet. Uh, you'll get to it in third year. I won't ruin that surprise. But, um, spoilers, you start calling yourself a scientist at some point because you do original research. You travel around the world presenting that work. You know, you have in another way become the person that you always wanted to be. So why am I making this video then? You know, us, we're not the kind of person who boasts about their accomplishments or indeed has any kind of positive self-image. Well, you become the person that you wanted to be. Scientist, filmmaker, you actually even run your own business. The problem is that now, 10 years down the line, you're not the person that you want to be. Over the next 10 years, and particularly after you finish your PhD, you notice that things aren't quite right. You, you can't put your finger on it, but you, you feel like something's just wrong. It's almost like you're singing in a choir and you're singing the right notes, but at a different tempo to everyone else. You're, you're getting increasingly out of time. You sing now, by the way, uh, quite a lot. Uh, you started to impress a girl, and uh, uh, anyway, because of how you are, you're not very good at talking about your emotions, or even really knowing what emotion you're feeling at any given time, so this festers longer than most people would let it. It'll start when you're at Oxford, and you are working all the time in an attempt to prove yourself by doing well, and not taking any time to relax or socialise even, and so you will get completely exhausted, and you won't do as well academically as you think you should. And that frustration will eventually turn into a burning self-hatred. Some stuff will happen in your fourth year at Oxford, which will make all of this much, much worse. And you will eventually reach a point where you are broken. And this will compound into profound imposter syndrome whilst you're doing your PhD. And then recently, for me, in about 10 years for you, 
things will come to a head and you will have a moment of clarity that you are and have been for some time quite profoundly unwell. You're not a doctor. Well, you are, but not a useful medical doctor. So you can't self-diagnose, but you are pretty sure that you are depressed, constantly anxious, and most cripplingly of all, have a complete lack of confidence in anything that you do anymore. Much of this will stem from how you will continue to overwork yourself and have unrealistic expectations of how much work you could and indeed should be doing. Being a YouTuber, by choice, you have an additional constant pressure to maintain relevance on different social media channels and to bring in revenue, one of which is dependent on the other. And that's a constant force on your back. This is complicated by the fact that being a YouTuber, you will be the product that you will be selling. And so you have to be market ready at all times. And even if things aren't going very well, you have to pretend that everything is. And so that's an additional strain, this, this um, strain to pretend that everything's fine at all times. And then the extra strain of fear of being found out, that you are selling a product that is not what it claims to be. You'll even write about this point of self-commoditization and it will get brought up by Tom Scott in a lecture at the Royal Institution. You know, your name in the famous lecture theater. And yet, despite this, despite being a successful YouTuber, despite earning a PhD, you will have zero confidence in anything that you are doing or saying. You will think that nobody should listen to you or pay any attention to the stuff that you are doing. You will feel incapable of doing anything. And that lack of confidence will shrink your life and limit any form of self-expression eventually. And you will feel incapable of making anything, incapable therefore of bringing in any money. And it m will make you feel like there's no real way forward. I hate to say it, but these are the things which are gonna to happen to you over the next 10 years in this timeline, because you don't have to live through these events. I'm here delivering this message to you to tell you what I'm going to do now and what I want you to do over the next 10 years to fix these problems. First of all, get all of this out in the open. I've actually already done this. I wrote a blog post, which I'll come back to in just a minute. But for your sake, talk about how you are feeling. Not constantly, because you don't want to sound like an Instagram influencer, but hang on, was Instagram a thing 10 years ago? No, that was founded in 2010. So uh, you have that hellscape of narcissism to look forward to. The point is, be honest about how you are feeling and talk to the people you care about, the people who care about you. Because even if it doesn't feel that way, there are people who care about you. Your parents, your, your family, your friends, your partner. Be honest about how you are feeling and talk it out when you're not feeling okay. Secondly, understand that you cannot work for 13 or 14 hours a day, every day, for longer than a month or two. Life isn't a sprint, it's a marathon. And so you have to invest time in your own well-being. Ring fence time that is just for you. And you can view yourself as a product that needs time for development, if you like, or just as a human being with needs and wants and desires beyond just adding economic value to the wider world. Go running. You actually end up quite liking running. Uh, keep painting Warhammer. In my timeline, you take me 10 years out of the hobby, but you get back into it and you still bloody love these lumps of plastic crack. Life is too short to do anything other than what you are passionate about. And economic work can be one of those things, but it shouldn't be all of them. Thirdly, when things get bad, get help. When you're at university and you don't think that the mental health services are for people like you, they are. When you've left university and you don't think that your mental state is important enough to go to the doctors, it is. Yes, these mental health services are not perfect and yes, they will be used by people in cases far more severe than yours, but they would still want to hear from you because 
they are meant for people like you too. Getting help takes a huge amount of courage because often it involves unearthing trauma that you have buried. I know for a fact that I still have to work through a lot of stuff that happened to me in my fourth year at Oxford. And being honest with myself and my family and friends about that was one of the hardest things I've ever done. But I know that it will be worth the investment because by getting help now, I am improving hopefully the rest of my life. To that end, I will be dialing back the frequency that I'm gonna be uploading stuff to this channel. Uh, you, the audience now, I mean, may have noticed that I hadn't uploaded for quite a while anyway, uh, and that's because I've been doing all of the above, and it's gonna take weeks, it's probably gonna take months even, but I hope to eventually be back here uploading, maybe not weekly, but certainly regularly, and hopefully also making podcasts on the Wikicast and, and streaming on Twitch. Just give me a bit of time for me. I've already made a bunch of changes to my work-life balance, and going forward I know there are further changes I would like to make on this channel, such as outsourcing a lot of my editing. It's an investment, but I'm hoping that that investment will allow me to make better videos more regularly, and most importantly, more healthily. Lastly, I just wanted to touch on why I hadn't made this video until now, because like I said, I made a blog post a, a while back now, which, you know, link in the description, you can read it if you want, there's more details on everything that I've talked about. But the reason I did it this way is because I think on YouTube there is a tendency to make videos about mental health and about a very honest desire to improve oneself in a way which almost commoditizes suffering. It, it commoditizes the discussion of mental health. It's kind of a genre all on its own, and I think in a funny way I value my YouTube audience, I value you guys, too much to allow you to find out about a topic as serious as this via a YouTube video. And so the people who, you know, care about my well-being, uh, who follow me on social media or, or whatever, can find out about this stuff on social media, on my website, what have you. But at the same time, I think it'd be inappropriate to not make a video talking about this because this YouTube channel is the hub of my existence online. It's the, the nexus of everything that I do. So I thought it'd be inappropriate to not make a video about this. I just wanted to try and do it in a way which resisted a lot of the tropes of, if you like, this genre. This video also falls at a very neat time to celebrate my 10 year anniversary on YouTube. Although it does feel a little bit disingenuous to be celebrating 10 years on the platform which has exacerbated most of the mental health issues that I've been suffering from. But I would be remiss to not say a colossal thank you to you, the audience, because much as this platform and this career has its own issues which are entirely self-inflicted and which I'm trying to work through, I recognise I am incredibly lucky to have this nuts career and the amazing opportunities that I've had recently. So more generally I guess than I've ever said in the, the end of a video before, thank you so much for watching. If this video has resonated with you in any way, please do heed my advice. You know, talk about how you are feeling, be honest with yourself, and if necessary, get help. There's nothing wrong with getting help and a great deal that's right. And if you'd like to learn more about the situation that I'm in, then yeah, link in the description is the blog post. It's a much more appropriate mechanism, I think, of talking about issues like this, rather than a YouTube video. He says, a YouTube communicator. I'll be back hopefully before too long with some fresh new content, uh, maybe, maybe even a fresh new look. It's probably about time to spring clean the place. But most importantly, a healthier attitude and a healthier work-life balance because I deserve it and I deserve to believe in myself. Thank you very much for watching. Oh, and one more thing for me 10 years ago, Bitcoin.